Thank you for joining me for this demo. Today, we will see how to implement Jinja2 templates within Itential Automation Platform, aka IAP. By the end of this video, you will be able to build a Jinja2 template within IAP and then integrate this Jinja2 template in an Itential Automation workflow. Before moving on to the demo, let's take a quick review of what Jinja2 templates are. Jinja2 is a very popular templating engine in the Python environment. How does Jinja2 works? Actually, it's quite simple. In Jinja2, there are two main components. One, it's the template, and second, it's the data. The template is for the document that you want to create. The template will have some static content and some dynamic content. You can build logic to generate this dynamic content using the data object that is passed to this template. The Jinja2 engine would render the template using this data and then create a document. The document can be an XML document, a JSON document, or any format with text encoding. The link to the source article for this diagram is mentioned in the description box below. Now for this demo, let us consider a sample use case. Let's say your HR department is conducting a workshop and they have a list of participants. They want to create company email IDs for each of the participant and then print their data. In order to create a template for this, let's hop in Itential Automation Platform. In IAP, you have to navigate to the Automation Studio first. In order to create the template, click the Create button on the top left corner in the Automation Studio. Now select Template as the artifact you want to create. You can name the template anything you like. Today, I'm going to name it as email generator. The group allows you to create collection of similar templates. And I'm going to name the group as HR templates. The type can be a text FSM or a Jinja2. And today we are creating a Jinja2 template. You can give an optional description explaining what the template does. Once you create the template, you're navigated to the Template Builder UI. In the Template Builder UI, you can see a placeholder for the data and a placeholder for the template. Data is a sample payload that you can use to render the Jinja2 template and then generate the output. I now have a list of participants with their first name and last name that I'm going to use to render the output. I'll need a Jinja2 template that loops through this participant list, gets the first name, last name of each participant, and then generate the email ID. For this demo, I already have a Jinja2 template ready. As soon as I paste the template in this Jinja2 template placeholder, I see the output generated. In IAP, you can make changes to the template and generate the output immediately. Now suppose the email ID that I see is not that I want. I want the email ID to have the first name and last name in all lowercase. In this case, I can use built-in Jinja2 filters to get this done. And now I have the email ID with first name and last name in all lowercase. In order to learn about the syntax for Jinja2 and all the inbuilt filters that Jinja2 has and that you can use in IAP, you can visit the official Jinja2 document and the link for this documentation is given in the description box below. Now let us use this template in a IAP workflow. I already have an email generator workflow ready for us for this demo. This workflow has three tasks. 
The first task is the render Jinja template task, which would take in the template that you want to render and the data, and then give the output of the template. I'll then query the output of the template and then view this template on in the view data task. Let's understand the render Jinja template task. The render Jinja template task can be searched in the task menu and you can find it under the template builder task. This task takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the template that you want to render and the second parameter is the context, the data object that you want to send to this template to generate the output. Now this object can either be statically given or it can be created as a variable. The value to this variable can be taken from any other task in the workflow or you can ask the end user to give this value. For simplicity, I am statically giving this value today. Now let's save this and run the workflow. The workflow is running and you can see that the template is already executed. The template takes in a list of participants and as an output gives us a rendered template which is the template output. I have queried this rendered template from this JSON object and then I'm viewing the output in here. Now I can see the output of the Jinja2 template that is printing all the participant with the email IDs. I can click OK and then complete this workflow. So now we have learned how to create a Jinja2 template with an IAP and then how to integrate it in an IAP workflow using the render Jinja template task. Thank you.